And um, I think he's pretty good, right? <laughs> we can give it up. Give it up for Chris. <laughs> So we have about an hour together, and I'm hoping that by the end of the show that you get to know me through my music, my songs, and obviously through the silly things I might tell you in between the songs too. And um, I think the first thing you should know about me, and it's actually one of the first things that I told you about me, is I'm a bit of a control freak, okay? I, I mean, I would love not to be. I would love to be a go with the flow type of gal, you know. But it's just I'm not. I've learned to accept it. Um, I would love. To, I would go with the flow if I knew when the flow starts, when the flow ends. Is there a snack? Is there a break? You know. I need. I like to know all of the details. I literally saw a meme today online. It was like a guy kayaking, kayaking in like rapids. And like bumping everywhere it was like complete chaos. And it says like me when I go with the flow. And I was like, yes, I totally felt that. So yeah, that's the first thing you should know about me. And I think sometimes it's my superpower. Um, for example, in my career, I am an independent artist. So I think I need to know where everything is going at all times or else, you know, it crumbles and falls apart. At least we think it does. And, um, but in other aspects of my life, not so much a superpower. You know, like in love, being a control freak, wanting to know all the details all the time can be a little annoying, you know, sometimes. Or even like in the dating world, like that deep, dark, scary place, the dating world. Like especially today, you know, dating on apps. You don't know this person, you don't know what they actually look like, what they smell like, what they sound like. Are they who they really say they are? Are they gonna show up? Like so many questions. Unanswered, I cannot. So I wrote a song. It, it was sort of inspired by that. It's called Maybe. There's something about the way you see me that no one ever has before. You make me nervous and uneasy But I still want more You text me when you have been drinking And it's a quarter after two I know I should be sleeping
So does anybody here speak French? <laughs> un petit peu, okay, a couple people, a petit peu, a couple people, a petit peu, that's like, mm, not bad. You can, you know, add them on, a little, un petit peu, petit peu, petit peu. You guys are, f like, bilingual. <laughs> um, as you probably understood, um, French is my first language, English is my second language, um, and I do write in both languages, um, and I would love to play a French one for you guys tonight, if, if that's okay. Ouais? Cool. So this next one is very special to my heart. Um, it's an older song, and I don't know about you, because Chris writes songs as well. Sometimes I write songs before I actually live it. It's like this weird thing. And the next one is sort of, sort of the, the, the situation here. And it's, it, like I wrote this in 20, I think 2017. And when I recorded it, I was working on my record called No Water, No Flowers. And I had a different team at the time, a different music team. And they told me, Geneviève, you have too many slow ballads on your album. Maybe you should try and like, you know, write more upbeat stuff. You know, a lot of people in the music industry, they like the more upbeat stuff because, you know, there's more chances of it playing on the radio. But... When I write, I don't think about that. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not sitting down being like, today I'm gonna write a song that's gonna play on the radio. Like, no, I have feelings and they come out. Like, has, I don't think about that. Someone else's job to think about that when once the music is done. And so they told me, maybe you should remove one of the slower ones on your album. And they wanted me to re to remove this one, Sans Toi. And it turns out, Sans Toi is my most streamed song of my whole catalog. Is that song a slow French song? Almost a million streams on Spotify today. So sometimes you just have to follow your gut and just do what you really want to do. So on that note, here is Sans Toi. It means without you. Je les oublie dès qu'ils s'en vont. Je les 
qu'ils soient l'un après l'autre Aucun baiser ne vaut les nôtres Crois-moi Merci. Tonight's one of those nights where I really needed a show. And I'm so grateful for each and every single one of you that came out tonight and everybody who's watching at home. Thank you so much for being there. Now that I told you a little bit about me, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, I want to know, obviously this question is directed to you, not the people watching, because my question is, I want to know, here in the room, does anybody like have no social media at all? No Facebook, no Instagram, nothing. Show, lift your, yeah? You got some people? Yeah, I can't see all of you, so good thing for the clapping. You've been here before, you know the drill. Um, so we have a couple people that are off the grid How does it feel to be off the grid? Feel, feels great? You know what? I envy you. I really do. Right before the show, all I was doing is like posting about the show and, you know, doing the social media thing. I do think that if I wasn't a singer-songwriter, I might not have social media. Or I would definitely have a different relationship with it for sure. And... When I say I envy you for not having it, I'm serious. I'm not sarcastic. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. And especially during lockdown, I live by myself um, with my cat, Topaz. <laughs> I miss her so much every time I'm out on tour. And uh, so during COVID, during lockdown, I spent a lot of time on my phone, okay? Too much time on my phone, like, doing what I call doom scrolling, like just scrolling until the end of times and just looking at everybody's perfect life, you know, like, oh, they bought a house, cool. Oh, they're going on tour, cool. Like, oh, like she's so much prettier than me. Great, good for her. They got a cute dog, all right. They, they're making bread. A cute couple making bread, good for them. And like, you know, at the end of this doom scrolling, I just felt like crap about my own life. And when you just keep doom scrolling every day, every night, it just brings you down big time. Um, so I made a list of everything that I hate about social media. And I turned it into this next song. It's called Instagram. <laughs> singing when I was singing 
to an empty bar. It's true. She's prettier, and her life seems dreamier, and it kind of makes me want to throw my phone. It kills my self-esteem, means way too much to me, to be the girl that I want them all to know. But how I really feel won't make the highlight real, cause if I'm honest even I these days we all need validation because we can't reach the expectations because she's way prettier and her life seems dreamier yeah i tried but i just can't put down my phone it kills my self-esteem means way too much to me to be the girl Thank you. Thank you. I hope you don't relate. <laughs> but I'm sure you do. They know how to get you. Even sometimes like you're talking to someone about something, like, oh, I really want to buy like a new blender. And then like there's ads for blenders on your Facebook page. Did that happen to you guys? Yeah. They're listening to us. Us. All the time. Like, huh. well, if you're listening now, I want a million dollars. Please. <laughs> Another thing about social media, too, is that you kind of like stay connected with people that you might not really stay connect with, connected with in real life, you know? You just kind of have them on your Facebook or whatever. And sometimes, and I think, I think everybody here can relate um, because like, I didn't see every single one of you, but I think everyone's old enough to have an ex, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, ex-something. I think everybody here has an ex. Am I right? Okay. We love the X. And um, I, don't think, I don't think there's anybody here who saw their ex on social media with someone else for the first time and really genuinely thought, good for them. I'm really happy for them. Like, that is not true. That is just not true. No one feels like that. It's awful. It's just awful. No matter how your relationship ended, you just don't want to see that. And with social media, you get to see all of it. It's great. It's really great. Um, <laughs> so this next one is exactly about that specific situation. You'll get it. Posted a brand new picture of the smiling faces at your birthday dinner. There's someone I didn't recognize with your arm around sitting to your right. She looks like me. I wouldn't call it jealousy, but ooh. She looks 
so smart? Is it bad that it makes me feel stupid? The hardest part is that she looks a lot more suited to your lifestyle, your friends, and your family. Does your mom like her better than me? Are you and her talking, kids? I know it's none of my business, but one. Yeah. Okay. Oui, oui. And earlier I asked like who speaks French here and Chris didn't say he speaks French but he I don't want to put you on the spot okay I don't want to put you on the spot but he learned the words to this song for me to share with you guys and I think like he deserves so much love for this. <laughs> Sorry I put you on the spot but I just think that is so cool as a French speaker coming here to the States and having a musician, like, at least try. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at least try. I love it. Thank you so much. I um, think learn and words are really generous words right now. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. They don't know what's on your iPad there. <laughs> but I, I was touched by that for sure. Um, this next one is called Les Lignes de Ma Main. And it means the lines in my hands. And it's a song about just trusting that everything's going to be okay. And I think we all need that right now. The world is in a weird place. And it has been for a little bit. And so I hope to give you a little bit of hope with this one. Les lignes de ma main. en rien Depuis que je crois en toi J'ai fui, j'ai eu peur d'être bien Mais je suis prête cette fois J'ai pris le chemin Dans le 
les tremblements du monde Des amours qui en paient le prix Je sens mon cœur qui gronde Qui se bat pour rester Tune up. Huh? No, I'm from Quebec. Quebec. Montreal, Quebec. So I told you a couple of things about me now. Um, told you I'm a control freak. Um, I hate social media. Um, that I like to follow my gut when it comes to music and my choices. And one more thing that I want to tell you and that I'm proud of is that I'm sober. I've been sober, alcohol-free for almost seven years. Thank you so much. My sober anniversary is coming up. It's on January 15th. And I cannot believe, like, seven years, like, for real. I When I first started to experience with sobriety, like, one month seemed so long. And I would do these these breaks where I'd be like, I'll do one month, no alcohol, and then I would feel so good, you know? And then I would just jump right back into it and just feel like total crap afterwards. And I just had these weird loops. And then one day I just decided like, okay, clearly drinking casually is not for me. I'm not able to do it, so I'm just gonna quit. And like that was January 15th, 2017. And it's a journey, and sometimes, after seven years, I don't think about it every single day. Um, it's like a way of life now. Um, and I love a hangover-free life. I encourage you to experience with it. <laughs> it's very nice. Um, and I think, I think the whole world is a weird place to be sober. I think we normalize alcohol a lot, and alcoholism. I think... The music industry is a real weird place to be sober, but we are getting there. Like, there's more and more like sober artists that I've met, and sober places you can play. Like p places you can play at, they have sober options to drink and stuff like that. Um, like in Nashville, I've noticed that they have a lot of sober-friendly alternatives. When I go to see shows, um, like they have these fun drinks that's not just like Coke or Sprite or ginger ale. You know, like cool different things that I've never never tried. And the last time I was in Nashville, I went in March to write some songs for uh, my next record that I'm working on now. And I met up with my friend Lydia and her boyfriend Aaron. I didn't know Aaron um, 
but we met up, all three of us. And when I started to chat with Aaron, I realized that he was also sober, alcohol free. And I was like, that's so cool. Like, we can connect on that. And we started to talk and we wanted to write a song. That's why we met up. And sometimes when I write songs with people, I know exactly what I want to write about. I show up and I like, you know, like with Instagram, I literally had a list. And I was like, let's make a song with this. It was very clear. But that day I didn't really have something specific I wanted to write about. But then I started to chat with Aaron and we're talking about sobriety and stuff. And I said, don't you feel like us sober people, like we feel everything so much more because it's face to face with everything you're feeling all the time. It sucks, <laughs> like sometimes, and I'm a pretty emotional gal, like that's why I write songs. So I have to feel all these things and there's no numbing and it's tough. And I said, don't you feel like us pe sober people, we feel everything times two. And he giggled and he was like, times two, I like that. That should be the title of the song. We should write about that, and, th and then we did. So here's times two. with the line smiling so wide when really I'm dying inside hearing I've never looked better when I've never felt worse who knew that me getting sober would feel a little more like a curse too nice to say what I think so Stop it. was me There's a bar. It's hilarious. <laughs>
It's hilarious. It's almost, it's just funny. <laughs> Have you discovered any favorite mocktails? I love CBD stuff. Mm-hmm. Like at the basement East in Nashville, they have this one CBD drink and I like literally go to that venue, not for the music, but for the drink. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to go to the basement East to have that drink. I like that a lot. It's like kiwi, it's like strawberry kiwi CBD mm-hmm. thing. It's pretty dope. Very good. I think I drank one of those during my staff meeting today. Really? I did. That's funny. I love that. Is it allowed? I mean, they sell it at the grocery store now. Yeah, <laughs> you can have CBD. You don't get high from CBD, just so you know. It's just like the part of cannabis that makes you relax. Not, I w- I'm, I'm sober. I'm not going to drink something that's going to get me high. That's <laughs> that would be silly. That would be against what I, what I live for. We're almost to the end of the show. I still have some, some three more songs for you guys and one more silly story, maybe two silly stories. Um, (laughs) I dated this person, this guy, a couple of years ago. And we were kind of in the same friend circle. And that can get a little bit messy. Um, And so we quickly realized that. And we were like, you know what? We're not going to date anymore. Let's just try and avoid each other for a little bit, make things less awkward, and then we'll just move on. Cool. We both decided we're mature. Let's do that. (laughs) <laughs> and um, so I live in Montreal and um, one thing that I love to do is I love to take my computer and go sit at my favorite coffee shop and just like write or work on stuff um, research things I just like to be outside of my apartment um, so that day that we decided actually it was the next day that we decided we decided not to see each other anymore then the next day I go to my favorite coffee shop I bring my computer, I sit down, and the guy walks in. And I'm like, you don't even live here, like around here. What are you doing here? And he's like, oh, sorry, I I didn't know you were going to be here. I'm like, yeah, right. And he's like, I'll take it to go. Cool, take it to go. Ciao, bye. And then the next day, I take the metro. And um, I live on the green line, and this guy lives on the orange line. And somehow, we ended up in the same cart at the same time. Like, why? It got weird. I was like, are you following me? But no, it just happened. And two days later, I used to work at a music, a music school. I used to give music um, lessons. And I show up to my usual shift. And my boss is there, and he's like, hey, there's a teacher who quit yesterday. He got a gig for Cirque du Soleil, and he's out on tour for like a whole year. And I'm like, that is so cool. Good for him, you know? And then he's like, there's a new guy we hired. He's in the next room. You should go say hi. Guess who it was. For real. Not a joke. So. my own own song I see you walking in wow I've been singing this song for like six years and I forget it just give me a sec someone just said it's his fault yeah it's a guy's fault Your 
So that song, Magnetic Love, like, you know, a lot of people think it's like, you know, a, a love song that comes from a place of love and stuff. It sounds like a love song, and it, like, turned into something that sounds like a love song, but the real feeling was like, oh, I'm so annoyed, like, stop showing up all the time, get out of my life. <laughs> and I think it's funny, because one of my best friends actually played that song at her wedding. <laughs> and, and she's divorced today. <laughs> so... I, I take some responsibility here. It's better like that. But, uh, yeah, I think I always think of her when I sing it. She's actually my cat sitter. She went to see my cat today. So if you're watching Van, merci Van. Hope Topaz is okay. Um, we have two more songs for you guys. And remember earlier I said that I'm a control freak? Remember that? So it's actually really two last songs. Like, there's no encore. I don't like encores. I like to know all the details, so I assume that you like to know all the details, too. Like, when I'm sitting, watching a show, and then the person comes for an encore, and another encore, I'm like, oh, I, should, I, I would like to know. So I'm letting you know now. <laughs> two more songs, and then we're going to bed. Cool? <laughs> Good with that? Yeah. All right. Well, what about the line from the band? Ah, we did that one before. <laughs> what are they telling me? Ah. <sighs> but, you, th you know, I think one of the reasons why I love doing this is because I'm in charge here. <laughs> you know? I <laughs> can control the room. I think that's why I like to be a performer a little bit. <laughs> um, I want to know, okay, we're like, this is actually my last show in the U.S. of the whole year. I have one more show in Quebec in a, in a week. But I'm like really towards the end of my year. And all year, I asked every single one of my shows, from January to now, I asked everyone the same question. And now, 
it's a little bit funny because, you know, it's towards the end of the year. But the question is, I want to know if anybody here made a New Year's resolution, like last year, like 2023, that they kept until today. Yes. Really? Yes. Good for you. <laughs> love that. I love that. Good for you. Are you going to make a new one for next year? No, I'm going to keep working. That's, that's awesome. I love it. Well, that could be your resolution. Just keep, keep doing the year before's resolution. Did you make a New Year's resolution? No. My, mine are garbage. Garbage? I, I, I make about eight oh. of them, and I think that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. It's a very sweeping resolution. <laughs> well, I haven't made one for 2024 yet. I will. But my resolution for 2023 was to do things that I've always stopped myself from doing out of fear of failing, fear of looking stupid. Like, it might not show tonight on stage, but I'm a fairly insecure and um, anxious person. And so that was my New Year's resolution, to do things that I've always just like wanted to do, but I never really did. And the first thing that I did this year for that is I'm 33 now, and I just got my driver's license this year. <laughs> I think everybody on the tour in my touring team is very happy that I can finally pitch in and drive a little bit. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had my learner's permit for 11 years. I really think I beat some kind of record there. Um, so yeah, I did that. And... No, no accidents, no. And I've only been driving since, like, March. Ooh, and driving in the U.S.? Okay, first of all, kilometers, miles, confusing, okay, at first. And you guys, you guys are bad. <laughs> you guys are bad, like, you speed. Like, I remember we did a Midwest tour back in, like, September, and I was, like, driving on the highway. I hope no one here is a police officer or, like anyone watching, but I'm driving and I'm not used to the kilometers, miles thing. And I'm driving, it's like, I'm like at 86 miles an hour. I'm like, this feels all right. And then like when I got home, I calculated like the, the conversion and I was like, oh, that's really fast. <laughs> I should have been driving that fast, but I was just following the guy ahead of me. Okay. It's his fault. So anyway, okay. Back to what I was saying. I got my driver's license and you know, Another thing that I've been doing, too, is asking people that I've never met to, to learn one hour's worth of music and play with me on stage. Like, that's not something I would have done last year. It would have made me too anxious. I would have been stressed out, like, a week before the show. Like, are they going to learn the parts? Can I trust them? But I just, I'm trying to go with the flow, people. I'm trying to go with the flow. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's hard, it's hard. And um, also, all year, I worked on, a, on an album. I'm working on my fourth album. And... Um, I used to be very, I am still very meticulous about like my art and I used to really do like write the song, record the song, release the song and then play the song live. Like in my head somehow that was the order of things for the last 10 years I've been doing that. But this year I was like, no, I'm going to play these new songs all year even if they're not released. So I didn't tell you guys but I played a bunch of newer ones tonight. Um, and it's funny because the only one I messed up is like the oldest one that I've played a million times. <laughs> Sometimes your brain goes there. So um, if you will allow me, I would love to play an unreleased one for you now. It's called Same Old Me, and it's about my deepest, darkest insecurities. So it's no, no stress at all. <laughs> Easy peasy. I wish I was more easy going, not so uptight, more fun, less boring. I want to go out without worrying about everything. Did I sound stupid? Did I stutter? Maybe my English could be better. I want to speak without my voice echoing back at me I always thought it would magically happen one day But nothing has changed and there's 32 candles on my 
So if you want an encore, ask for it. <laughs> all right, Ann Arbor. You asked for it. Okay, first of all, I want to thank Berkeley and Rob and Steve and Tyler, who are doing the video downstairs, for their hard work tonight. And I want to thank Chris here for playing with me. So please give it up for everyone here at the Ark. Thank you to the volunteers for making this happen. We could not be here without you. So thank you so much for helping out and being there. <clears throat> I would love to tell you to go and buy my merch. But truth is, I don't have merch with me today. OK? And you can thank the US Customs for that. <laughs> I had a mishap, like an honest mistake thing that happened with merch a couple of months ago, and they literally go through all of my stuff every single time I cross, so I cannot bring merchandise right now. And through the airport, you just can't. So next time, I will bring my merch, okay? But if you really want, I have on my website, I have like vinyl, CDs, um, I have temporary tattoos, I have all sorts of really cool merch. I, think, I know it sucks to like tell you this right now when, when I don't physically have it, but if you want, I have an online boutique that you can go and support. And if you can't, 
um, support with money, you can also support by just like following me everywhere on all social media, like Instagram, YouTube, Spotify. You know that, that thing I hate, the, so the social media? Watch me. I'm actually pretty legit true. I don't, I'm not fake. I'm not a scam on Instagram, okay? I'm pretty, pretty true, I think, I hope. But uh, yeah, please go follow me everywhere. Just so, also so you can literally follow me. And next time I come, you can see it on my page and maybe come back if you liked what you listened to tonight. Um, so yeah, we're going to finish this song with, uh, this song, this show, with a song. Um, it is a love song that I wrote, but it's not a song about a dude. It's a song about music because music is the most beautiful thing on this earth, and music is the reason why we're all here tonight. Music is why I flew all the way from Montreal to play for you guys, and it is what I was born to do. I've been singing my whole life, and I just owe so much to music, and I would love to sing this one for you, and um, it is a bit of a sing-along at the end. Are you guys okay singers? Okay, we got some, oh yeah, we got a woo, we got a oh yeah. I trust, I trust that this will be good. The lyrics, are in your arms at the end. And I'll let you know when it's your turn to sing with me. Thank you so much. I would love to meet you after the show if you want. I'll try and find my way to the exit so we can say hello. Sir. 